Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. Right now at 5, two major wildfires break out in Orange County, one doubling in size late last night as two firefighters are hospitalized. We'll have the latest on the firefight coming up. Amy Coney Barrett confirmed to the Supreme Court, sworn in unofficially last night by the president, how soon she could be hearing cases coming up. One week out from the election, record number of voters continue to cast ballots early. But if you plan on going day of, we'll tell you what you need to know and where. Plus the battle over poll watching. This is Tuesday, October 27th, 2020. Good morning. It's 5 a.m. Good to have you with us on this Tuesday. I'm Maddie Jansen. And I'm Taylor Schaub, and we begin tonight, or this morning with a resurgence of wildfires in Southern California. The flames tearing through Orange County, claiming thousands of acres. Tens of thousands have been ordered to leave their homes in Orange County after the Silverado and the Blue Ridge fires began yesterday, growing to more than 13,000 acres, burned within a matter of hours. The flames spurred on by Santa Ana wind gusts of 70 miles per hour or more. You, know, you get these uh, single-digit humidities and uh, winds like we're experiencing. Fires are going to move very, very quickly. Two firefighters were hospitalized with serious burns. At least 70,000 people were forced to evacuate, and areas under evacuation orders are continuing to grow. Just really frightening to see the doubling in acreage last night, just between 8 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Kev, what was going on there? Well, we're still seeing some of those Santa Ana winds. The good news in this is we are going to see the winds continue to die down throughout the day. We're already seeing that, uh, but the red flag warning is still in place for a little bit longer. I want to show you the state map and the winds right now, and you can see they're really not bad. We are again seeing some stronger gusts at some of the peaks around the state, but down to Los Angeles, east northeast wind at six, San Diego seeing calm winds where we're still seeing a little bit of that breeze is to the east of us. Vegas still has a breeze out of the north northeast to 12 and then into parts of Arizona. But overall, things should start to improve here as we go throughout uh, the next uh, probably six to seven hours uh, around the state. Uh, take a look outside, and yes, it is Halloween. So so we thought we'd keep the cobwebs on the camera. Uh, 48 degrees. I had to turn the heater on in my car, the seat warmers, because of this. 48 right now. A south uh, southeast wind at 3 miles per hour. And as we take a look at our current satellite radar, nothing to show you. We've got clear skies out there to start off our morning. Watches and warnings. The air quality alert still in place through Friday now because of these fires. And then we also have the red flag warning in place for the Kern County Mountains until 5 o'clock tonight. So still in place because of the lower humidities, but the winds have calmed. As we take a look at the hour by hour here, a little different than yesterday as we are going to warm up back into the 70s, 75 degrees this afternoon. To Hatchby, 32 right now, still a low dew point at 5 with 32% on the humidity and an east south southeast wind at 8. So fire weather is still a concern, but the winds, as you can see, a lot different story than what we were seeing yesterday. They are pretty much calm all around Kern County at this time and temperatures this afternoon expected in the lower 60s by the afternoon. I'll have more in your pinpoint forecast. That's coming up in just a bit. All right, thanks, Kevin. Your 17 court watch a man convicted of beating his three month old daughter to death was sentenced to life in prison. Eddie Leva was sentenced yesterday for the 2014 killing of his daughter. The child's mother, Vanessa Wolf, was convicted earlier this year of second-degree murder and sentenced to 25 years to life. Three-month-old Adonali Leva was found dead in the couple's apartment on L Street. She was severely neglected with broken ribs and a kidney infection. And sentencing is scheduled today in the case of another three-month-old child's death. Erica Cervantes pleaded no contest to one count of willful cruelty to a child. In 2014, Cervantes' daughter was taken to Memorial Hospital, where investigators say they responded for a report of child abuse. The infant was having seizures and difficulty breathing. Her condition worsened, and she was taken to Valley Children's Hospital in Madeira, where she died a day later. The baby's father, Jesus Bautista, is due back in court in December. He's charged with four counts of willful cruelty to a child. A fire damaged two homes in East Bakersfield. It happened yesterday just before 4.30 in the 600 block of Hazlett Avenue, just 
southeast of Mount Vernon Elementary School. County firefighters said into a, in addition to the buildings that were burned, the flames damaged vehicles parked in the area. The cause of the fire is still under investigation and there were no reports of any injuries at this time. Now to an issue we follow closely, pedestrian safety. A man has died after he was struck by a commercial box truck on Manor Street. The accident happened around 4.30 yesterday afternoon. According to the highway patrol, the man was in the roadway uh, taking items out of a commercial work truck vehicle when he was hit. He died at the scene. CHP says the driver is cooperating with investigators. The name of the victim has not been released. And another man was injured when he was hit by a car on Union Avenue near Bernard Street. The California Highway Patrol says the man was taken to the hospital with moderate injuries. There's been no update on his condition. The driver stayed at the scene and cooperated with officers. 506 is your time now from our 17 News follow-up file. New details have been released regarding a motorcycle crash that killed a 12-year-old boy and left a 51-year-old man in the hospital. 12-year-old Bruce Cross died in the crash Wednesday on Kern Canyon Road in front of Hillcrest Memorial Park. The Bakersfield Police Department says the man operating the motorcycle was not related to the boy. He was taken to the hospital with moderate injuries. His name has not been released. A vigil was held at Hillcrest Memorial Park this weekend in honor of Cross. The family's asking anyone who would like to help with funeral expenses to make a donation directly to Hillcrest Mortuary for Bruce Cross. And new this morning, a slew of gun arrests as Bakersfield police continue their efforts to combat gang violence. The first of a series of arrests happened Friday. 27-year-old James Webb was arrested on suspicion of gang violence, carrying a concealed gun and having an open container of alcohol in a vehicle. 27-year-old Dion Evans was arrested on suspected gang participation, carrying a concealed gun and driving with a suspended license. 28-year-old Kazan Villegas and 29-year-old Philip Lopez were arrested on suspicion of possessing unregistered guns, prohibiting persons in possession of guns and gang participation. Then on Saturday, 19-year-old Darren Williams was arrested on suspicion of having an unregistered gun and gang participation. 24-year-old Darius Burton was arrested after running away from officers during a traffic stop. Police say he threw a handgun away as he was running. That gun was recovered. The driver of the car, 29-year-old DeAndre Smith, was also arrested on gang and gun charges. And then on Sunday, 25-year-old Augustine James was arrested after allegedly firing a gun into the air. He was booked for negligent discharge and possession of a concealed gun. Finally, 24-year-old Abel Villatore was arrested after running away from police during a traffic stop. He was booked on suspicion of being a felon with a gun as well as drug and gang charges. 508's your time now and on to the latest for the coronavirus pandemic in Kern County. No new deaths reported from Kern Public Health yesterday. The department announced 47 new cases. Right now more than 10,000 people are isolated in their homes. According to Kern Public Health, 14 people are being treated for COVID-19 in local hospitals. 416 have died. Wiki's Wine, Dive and Grill is giving out free meals for National First Responders Day. The restaurant says they'll provide a free lunch to on-duty first responders today. The meal includes a burger, chips, a cookie and a drink from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Off-duty first responders are invited to dine in on their patio. For more information, just visit our website, kget.com. And another food distribution event is taking place tomorrow. The Martin Luther King Community Center, along with the Patriots of the Cross, are giving out free food boxes every Wednesday in the month of October. It's happening between 2.30 and 5.30 at the MLK Distribution Center at Central Seventh-day Adventist Church on Wilson Road. For more information, again, just go to our website, kget.com. Making news around the nation, protests erupted in West Philadelphia in the wake of a deadly police shooting. <laughs> what began as a gathering outside the police station last night quickly descended into chaos. Investigators saying at least four officers were sent to the hospital after they were hit by bricks. There were reports of fires, vandalism, and looting. All of this took place hours after 27-year-old Walter Wallace was shot and killed by Philadelphia police officers. Police say Wallace had a knife when he approached officers, and they say he ignored orders to drop the weapon, and that's when officers fired on Wallace. 
Wallace was pronounced dead at the hospital. The first nest of dangerous so-called murder hornets have been found in the United States. An army of biologists donned futuristic protective suits as they approached the hive in Washington state. Armed with plastic kitchen wrap, a 2x4, and a high-tech vacuum, the giant Asian hornet packs a massive stinger with the ability to spit venom. They're known for decapitating bees by the thousands and taking over their hives. Scientists harness technology to track down the first hive found so far in the U.S., tying micro-trackers to the hornets with dental floss. By using the radio signals that these things send out, we can track where they are in space. For now, scientists hope the population of murder hornets is isolated to a small area in the Pacific Northwest. And all I can say is 2020. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Welcome back here at 525. The latest local housing report from appraiser Gary Crabtree's out and shows more people are moving into Bakersfield, though more are leaving as well. It is a seller's market with home prices on the rise. The median home price in town is just short of 300K mark at $295,000. Experts say the rise in prices is due to people moving in from larger cities, realizing they can get more bang for their buck in the Central Valley. They're leaving their expensive homes in the LA area and they're moving to Bakersfield and they're able to afford a much larger home with a pool. At the same time, many are ditching California for locations like Idaho, Arizona, Texas, and Tennessee. Crabtree attributes the exodus to our state's high tax rates. It's a perfect storm for those looking to move out of the state with high home prices providing an opportunity to upgrade their standard of living. A new survey finds nearly three quarters of parents will spend more on Halloween this year, largely because they're trying to compensate for what's otherwise been a crummy year. That's coming from a survey conducted by Lending Tree, but for many, this won't be the first time going overboard on Halloween. More than half of Americans admit to having spent more than they can afford on the holiday at some point in the past. The most common reason, they wanted their decorations to look as good as their neighbors. <clears throat> Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> it's 5.33 now. 17 News is your local elections headquarters. A new justice will take her place, or her seat, I'm sorry, on the Supreme Court of the United States today. Justice Amy Coney Barrett was confirmed by the Senate and sworn in unofficially at a White House ceremony last night. Tracy Ponce has more on what this means and how it could impact the U.S. election. Hi, Taylor. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. This is President Trump's third appointment to the U.S. Supreme Court. He said he wanted it filled before the election. That I will well and A late night unofficial oath at the White House, followed by the official swearing in today, confirming Amy Coney Barrett as the latest justice to the U.S. Supreme Court. And I pledge to you and to the American people that I will discharge my duties to the very best of my ability. Over Justice Barrett promising to be impartial after a bitter partisan fight over her confirmation rushed in record time before next week's presidential election. Throughout her entire confirmation, her impeccable credentials were unquestioned, unchallenged, and obvious to all. The timing drew objections from Democrats who wanted the winner of the election to make this appointment. The American people will suffer the consequences of Judge Barrett's far right out of the mainstream views for generations. Our colleagues cannot point to a single Senate rule that's been broken, not one. One Republican, Senator Susan Collins of Maine, joined Democrats in the closest the Supreme, Supreme Court, Court vote in decades, 52 to 48. Legal experts predict this will be the most conservative court since before World War II. Women demonstrating against her appointment. Justice Barrett, the first mother of school-age children on the high court, joining just in time to hear arguments on the Affordable Care Act in two weeks. In a statement, Democratic nominee Joe Biden called this a rushed attempt to strip Americans of their health care. I'm Tracy Potts, 17 News. With one week until Election Day, the presidential candidates are holding rallies in battleground states. President Donald Trump is holding a Make America Great Again victory rally in Lansing, Michigan at the Capital Region International Airport. President Trump also has events in West Salem, Wisconsin and Omaha, Nebraska today. 
Former Vice President Joe Biden will travel to Georgia today, according to campaign officials. The Democratic nominee for president will give remarks on bringing America together in Warm Springs, Georgia, followed by a drive-in event in Atlanta. Sunrise Interviews is brought to you by Valley Strong Credit Union. Welcome back. Joining us this morning is Amy Smith, the executive director of the Bakersfield Museum of Art, here to tell us more about the museum reopening today. We're all very excited about this, Amy. Tell us, what can people expect as they come back to the museum for the first time in several months? Well, you know, we've been closed since March 17th. Well, technically, we got to reopen for one day in July, but otherwise we have been uh, waiting and preparing for this day to come. So we're super excited that uh, we get to welcome visitors back into the doors uh, safely, of course. We have all kinds of safety measures in place, including social distancing marketing, markers, hand sanitizers, all those kind of things. Um, but really, it's all about our exhibits and how wonderful to be able to have people come in and see some new exhibits that weren't there when we closed. Um, a couple of them include um, a retrospective on Marion Osborne Cunningham and um, all of our large works that are part of our permanent collection. You mentioned it. People basically have not been able to come to this museum since March. And we know how much the arts have been impacted in every sector by the coronavirus pandemic. How important was it to be able to reopen and allow families to come back in here and experience the arts, experience some culture right here in Kern County? Well, the museum is here for our community. I mean, we love our visitors from out of town, but really, I mean, we are the Bakersfield Museum of Art. So we are here for the Bakersfield community. And so for us to be able to provide these opportunities um, to our Bakersfield residents is just, is, is just wonderful. And, you know, our museum prides itself on bringing some really exclusive and exquisite uh, uh, exhibitions to, it, to, to our community. So um, I think it's something that's really important. Um, arts and culture helps uh, weave the fabric of who we are. And so, you know, at a time where we're still so stressed about everything and there's so much still unknown, I mean, goodness gracious, are we gonna have Thanksgiving or not? Who knows? But, you know, we, uh, we at the museum are just mm -hmm. really happy that we can, again, provide and kind of be that cultural cornerstone for the community. You mentioned a handful of things that are going to be on display, some of these new exhibits that are going to be really great. But really tell us, what, what should we expect when we walk into the museum for the first time in several months and just get to experience all that beauty? So when you walk in our doors, the first thing you're going to do is check in at our front desk. And we have hand sanitizer stations and a QR code. Uh, that guests will actually do a contact tracing so that, God forbid, we have an incident, we're going to be able to reach out and say, hey, you know what, this happened. But we really feel that we, we've uh, provided a safe and secure place. Uh, we have four galleries available, all with different exhibitions. Um, our artworks, which is our high school mentoring program, has been up since the summer. We also have an extension of our black and white, which mm. is uh, f photographs from two local collectors, Julie Regal and Suzette Clarue. And then, like I said, we've got two brand new exhibits that haven't been seen by the public yet, and that includes our select works from our permanent collection. We have over 400 pieces in our permanent collection, so these are all our large-scale pieces. And then we have our Marion Osborne Cunningham uh, uh, printmaker uh, stereographs up. And the cool thing about Marion Osborne Cunningham is she is why the museum actually mm -hmm. exists. We are here because of a generous gift from her family, um, of her work, and we actually started out as the Marion Osborne Cunningham Gallery, now known as the Bakersfield Museum of Art. Well, Amy, thank you so much for joining us. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Next Star Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.